Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. I'm so happy you were able to make it. Now I hope you all are doing well and staying cozy and snug at home and reading lots of great books and playing lots of games and using your big beautiful imaginations. My name is Jacqueline Vasid and I am a children's book author and I would love to share my two books with you today. I have Ruby's Sword and Caspian Finds a Friend. Now both these books came out last year um, with Chronicle Books in San Francisco and I just wanted to shout out a big thank you to Chronicle for allowing me to share these books with you today. I also wanted to thank um, Stamola Live for hosting all these wonderful live stream events. Um, for the past two weeks they've been hosting all these authors and illustrators from the Stamola Literary Agency and if you've missed any they will all be archived on their YouTube channel stamolalive.com so go check them out. All right for story time today I thought I would start with Ruby's sword but before I begin I have a very important question to ask you guys but in order for you to answer it you're gonna need to use your imaginations. And I think it might help if we put on our imaginary imagination caps. So if everyone can reach up way high and grab hold of your imagination caps and pop them on your heads. Now turn them on high and I'm going to show you something and I want you to tell me what you think it is. You ready? Here we go. What do you think this is? Now I can't hear you, um, but shout it out anyway to whoever's in the room with you and let them know what you think this is. Now I'm going to tell you some ideas that kids at my story times have shared with me. So some kids thought it would make a great arrow or maybe a stick man um, or maybe even a bird's leg with a bird's foot. Sometimes you see these footprints on the beach, right? Bird prints. Um, some other people thought it could make um, a great snowman's arm. I love that one. So it really can be anything you want it to be. All you have to do is use your imaginations. So today I'm going to put this away and we are all going to have our own imaginary stick swords. Um, and in this book Ruby swishes her stick sword a whole bunch of times and I thought we could help her and swish along with her. Do you guys want to try? Let's reach down and grab hold of our imaginary stick swords and let's practice swishing. Swish, 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 swish. Excellent. Now tuck them into your pockets and I'll let you know when it's time to take them out. Okay? All right. Let's read Ruby's Sword. It's written by me and it's illustrated by Paula Zakimi, who lives all the way in Argentina and she made all these beautiful pictures in this book. And here we go. Ruby raced through a sea of summer grass after her brothers, their long legs leaping ahead. Wait up, she called out. But only their laughter trailed behind like the tail of a kite just out of reach. Ruby flopped onto the ground, heart thumping. A single cloud sailed across an endless blue sky. A warm wind rippled through the grass, bending blades and revealing something hidden. What do you think those are? Let's see what Ruby thinks. Swords! Leaping and lunging, swirling and swishing, Ruby felt invincible. She raised her sword and faced the fearsome dragon. Okay, everybody raise your swords and swish, swish. Excellent. The dragon faded into a haze. Ruby gathered the other swords and marched off. I found dragon fighting swords, she announced, slicing the air with lightning bolts. Her brothers jumped down to take a closer look. Ruby granted them each a sword. Two knights in battle, bold and brave. Click clack, click clack. Ruby watched 
My turn, she shouted. Click clack, click clack was all she heard. Ruby stormed off in a cloud of dust and disappointment. The apples hung sky high. A royal feast. Now look what she's doing with her stick sword. She's knocking the apples down to feed the two bunnies and a squirrel. The ants were stuck creekside. Loyal subject saved. And here she's using her stick sword to make a bridge so the ants could cross safely. See, swords don't have to be just for fighting. You can do anything with them. The dirt needed decoration. And here she's drawing in the dirt. She's drawing a crown, a sword, a butterfly, and even a castle. A sudden stillness filled the air. Swallows scattered, shadows faded, a rolling storm blanketed the sun. Ruby raised her trusty sword. Okay, everyone, a big storm's coming. Raise your trusty swords. Wild winds whipped, swish, swish. Rumbling clouds grumbled, swish, swish. Raindrops drummed, swish, swish. Ruby gathered all her strength, ready? Swish, swish, good job. A mighty gust of wind blew a sheet off a laundry line. Ruby caught it with her sword. She began to build, click clack. Her brothers were curious. Can we help, they asked. Click clack was all they heard. They marched away and returned with some honorable offerings, twigs, rocks, a handful of dandelions, and finally, their swords. Together, they built a magnificent castle. Click clack, click clack, click clack. Perfect for sheltering many loyal subjects and three noble knights. The end. So that my friends was Ruby's sword. And I wanted to share with you one more magical stick sword that my daughter found on a hike nearby. Look at this one. Isn't this pretty amazing? All spiraled and twisted up. Now, if we use our imaginations, what could this be? It's got a great handle too. So yes, it could be a sword or maybe a magical wand. Or if we turn it this way, maybe it's an ancient walking stick um, or even a vine that monkeys could swing on, right? Um, and what if I put it on my head like this? Could it be a unicorn's horn? Maybe. So I encourage you guys to go out into your backyards if you have them or into a quiet park and find your own sticks and make them anything you want them to be, right? Maybe they're swords or maybe they're snowman's arms. They could be anything, right? Um, you just have to use your imagination. I also have a fun craft idea for you guys today related to Ruby's sword. So remember in the book where the dirt needed decoration and she got busy drawing in the dirt, right? And see here where she drew a castle and what did she build with her brothers at the end of the book? Do you guys remember? Was it a castle? So in a way, it was like Ruby was drawing in the dirt something she would later build. It was like she was designing something. So if you guys have any paper at home, um, I have brown paper here to look like dirt, but you can use white paper. And you can use a pencil. I have a, a tree branch pencil. It's made from a real tree branch. And you can draw on your paper as if you're drawing in the dirt, just like Ruby. Um, it could be something you would design or um, anything really. All you have to do is use your imagination. So that's the craft idea for Ruby. And next up, I am excited to share Caspian Finds a Friend. Now this book was illustrated by Marilise Brown. She did all the gorgeous artwork in this book. Um, and the story was inspired by a quote I read um, 
by a poet who lived a long time ago. His name is Rumi and um, the quote goes, what you seek is seeking you. And I love the idea of that quote that um, if there's something you really want, something you're wishing for, maybe that something really wants and is wishing for you too. So I use that to structure the story. Um, and Marilise, I had spoken with her about it and she had mentioned how she um, used that circular nature of the quote, what you seek is seeking you, and she put circles throughout the book. So for instance, the end papers, we have fish swimming in circles. And you might find other circle circles in the book like um, the sun, the shape of the sun, or even the sweeping arc of a wave. So you can look out for those. All right, here we go. Caspian finds a friend. Caspian lives in a lighthouse surrounded by a cold gray blue sea. Every day he watches the waves, wondering, waiting, wishing for a friend. Ev Do you guys see him right here? He's little, he's just a little guy right there. Every night he casts his light out into the darkness, searching. But no one arrives, just the sea and the skies. And so he waits. Until one day he has a new thought. He hurries home to find paper and pencil. It looks like he's writing a note. If we flip the book around, we can read what he's writing. It says, will you be, he hasn't finished it yet. On his table sits a bottle with flowers. He empties it, rolls up his paper, and slips it inside. Then down to the wide open sea he runs and throws the bottle in. He watches it float away, farther and farther, smaller and smaller. Days sink into weeks, weeks into months. He waits and waits, his hopes bobbing like a bottle on waves. Early one morning, Caspian notices a glistening nestled in the rocks. He slowly uncorks the bottle and pulls out a piece of paper. Only one word is written. He races to his little rowboat and pushes out to sea. Day fades into night and still he keeps rowing and rowing. The stars shimmer to life, illuminating the darkness. Caspian lies down in his boat and looks up. Watching, wondering, wishing and slowly falls asleep, his dreams drifting on a gentle sea. At first blush of dawn, Caspian wakes. In the distance, he sees something floating towards him. Closer and closer. Bigger and bigger. The bear's eyes are warm and gentle. He slowly lifts up a piece of paper. Will you be my friend? Caspian holds up his. Together, they travel across a sparkling sunlit sea, back to the lighthouse, back home. The end. So I was thinking about um, something we could do that's related to this story. And one thought I had 
was remember in the beginning of the book where Caspian was lonely and he was waiting and wondering and wishing for a friend um, but that friend never showed up but then one day he had a new thought and that changed everything he got really brave and he wrote a note and he sent it out into the world and that's how he was able to make his friend now I was thinking about how we are all stuck inside and we might be feeling a little lonely like Caspian um, and maybe this would be a great time for us to get really brave and reach out to those people we're missing. Um, whether they're our friends from school or our family who lives far away, uh, maybe now's the time to reach out to them and let them know that you're thinking about them because I bet they're thinking about you too and it would make them so happy to hear from you. And I think it would make you happy too. So that, my friends, is story time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys stay well and keep using your imaginations. Write your stories down, draw pictures, make little books, um, send them to your friends and family, and brighten up their day. All right, I hope to see you guys soon again.